Okay, so what I'd like to do now is to go into a bit more detail about both flat bones and uh, long bones, okay? And uh, what are the structures and then specifically how are they different from one another? Okay, so as a reminder, this is a flat bone, okay? And so basically, uh, if you remember uh, these uh, skull bones here on some of the top portions of the skull give us these flat bones and they're thin they're wafer like and these two surfaces one surface and the other surface down here are roughly parallel so it turns out that the outside is what's called compact bone and in the next pages we'll get into the microscopic structure of compact bone but the outside portion is compact bone, and that outside portion is also called the cortex. Okay, so you've got it on each side. And then within is this bone that's a bit more spongy-like, okay? And that's going to be called the diplo. Okay, and so what we find with flat bones is that they do have red bone marrow within this spongy um, bone tissue right here. But, uh, and it is, um, you know, red bone marrow is helping to make your blood cells, but there's no hollowed out large cavity. It's just very sponge-like. Now, in contrast, if we're looking at long bones, okay, you can see, um, first off, let's talk about some of the larger structures of these long bones. So first we have this area on the ends, okay, so the end is called an epiphysis and you're going to have one on each side of the long bone, okay. Then the part in the middle that's round and roughly shaped like a cylinder, that's called the diaphysis or the shaft, okay, so both of those words mean the same thing. And then in between both of the epiphyses and the diaphysis are areas called the metaphysis. So here's a metaphysis, here's a metaphysis. Okay. Now one thing you may notice is that the inside of a long bone is hollowed out and that's called the medullary cavity. Okay. Now on the outside and particularly in this diaphysis area is going to be compact bone. Okay. But then you notice internally on the epiphyses Notice the medullary cavity really doesn't get up into the epiphyses. And so here we're going to find spongy bone in this area. Okay. Now, uh, just like in flat bone, the spongy bone is going to all of those little holes in between. And you can see those holes in between quite well here. So all of the holes in between on the spongy bone are filled up with red bone marrow. That's the case in fl uh, flat bones. That's also going to be the case in long bones as well. You've got red bone marrow here and it's helping to make your blood cells. Now the medullary cavity right here, this hollowed out region on the inside, this is going to be filled up uh, in infants. It's filled up with red bone marrow and it's helping to make blood cells. But in adults that has switched over to yellow bone marrow and so it is just about um, lipid storage at that point in this area. Okay, um, Having the hollow portion of the bones is actually really helpful too in being able to um, have our bones be a bit lighter so that our muscles don't have to work quite as hard uh, whenever they're pulling on those bones and getting us to move. And so it's beneficial in that way as well. There is a blood supply to bones. I think a lot of times, um, at least before I took anatomy courses, you wouldn't really think of bones as being a living tissue. They seemed kind of not alive and just these very hard structures. Um, and so thinking there were blood vessels there didn't really, um, wasn't something I thought about. But in fact, these uh, bone is a very living tissue. They have cells inside of them. We'll learn about what those cells do in a minute. But they also have a very rich blood supply. Um, so the first one that comes in right in the middle of the diaphysis is this nutrient artery and vein. Now to get into the center of the bone, into this medullary cavity, there has to be a hole 
in the bone in that region. And that hole in the middle of the diaphysis is called the nutrient foramen. And these arteries and veins travel through that hole. That's generally going to be the case with all foramen, is that something is usually going to travel through it. That's why the hole is there. Okay, now in the metaphysis area, you're going to have this metaphyseal artery and vein enter into the bone, and it goes into the spongy region, not into the medullary cavity. You can see the same thing happening here. And then it's going to branch. And as it branches, some of these vessels get a new name. And whenever they are branching and traveling up into the epiphysis, they're going to be called the epiphyseal artery and vein because now they're located in the epiphysis. Okay, so it's the metaphyseal artery and vein when it first enters. And then once it gets into that epiphysis, it turns into the epiphyseal artery and vein. Okay. Um, Let's see, some other things that I want to make sure that I note. One, where two bones meet up, you're always going to have a pad of cartilage. Um, remember we said that two bones coming together means that they articulate. And so where they come together, they're going to have cartilage, and that cartilage is called articular cartilage. Okay, and that cartilage, we'll learn more about this in the joint section, that that cartilage is smooth, it uh, doesn't have a blood vessel supply, and so it's actually going to help to um, uh, reduce friction and prevent damage of the bone underneath as those joints, as those bones move past each other for the lifetime of a person. Um, so if we're looking here on our notes packets, uh, so let me help you out with the epiphysis, okay? So where the part is found on a long bone? Well, it's found at the ends, okay? And it's going to be both ends. Um, does the part contain marrow? If so, is it red or yellow? It is going to be red in both adults and children, okay? Is this part bone tissue? Yes, it is bone tissue. Okay, uh, and it's mostly going to have spongy bone uh, with a compact lining around the outside. Okay, if it's not bone tissue, well, that doesn't apply. It is bone tissue. Other features, because it's got red bone marrow there, um, that means that uh, blood cell formation is happening in this area because the red bone marrow. So see if you can do the same for the metaphysis, for the diaphysis. Um, things that I commonly get have students um, get wrong here on the medullary cavity. Where is it? Well, it's within the diaphysis. Okay. Uh, does it contain marrow? It has red in children and yellow in adults. Okay. Um, it's the next one is saying is the part bone tissue well it's a cavity it's hollow so no it is not actual bone tissue the cavity is not bone tissue so it then says if it's not bone tissue is it part of the blood supply no it contains yellow marrow in adults so no it's not part of the blood supply okay and then because it has that yellow bone marrow uh, the big thing that's important for it is that it stores fat. Okay. Um, let me see if there's other ones that are counterintuitive that I often have uh, students need a little bit of help with here. Okay. Um, a couple of things actually I do want to also mention that are on here. The paraosteum. Okay, this is going to be um, connective tissue. It's on the outer uh, periphery, outer edge of the bone. And endosteum is on the inner um, line. It lines the inner portion of the bone. Lines inner portion of the bone. Okay, both of these are going to be dense, um, irregular connective tissue. And 
the same here, dense, the regular connective tissue. Okay, and um, again, let me just show you where that would be. So here's the outer edge of the bone, and so just on that outer edge, you're going to have dense irregular connective tissue, and it's called the paraosteum. Also, lining this medullary cavity, okay, is going to be the endosteum connective tissue lining the inside part of this bone, okay. Um, it does ask you, too, on your sheets, what is the function of red bone marrow? Uh, blood cell production. Okay, what is the function of yellow mar marrow? It is going to store fat, which is essentially, it is going to store energy. Okay, that's what the fat does, is it provides that energy. And here's a place for you to just make your own drawing of a flat bone and label the compact and spongy layers and then talk about how is a flat bone different than a long bone. Um, for example, a flat bone doesn't have a medullary cavity. Okay, um, so that's one example that you have. Okay, and then once you've gone through that, you can get some practice labeling and also recognizing definitions of long and flat bones.